Thanks for joining us in this edition of National Focus. I'm Prisco Julian. In the headlines, Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt dialogues with farmers of Salisbury, 1.6 million to upgrade a stadium, and 94 small business owners in Laplin complete business training. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. Child abuse is unacceptable. Child abuse is not cultural, it is criminal. And one child abuse is one too many. For more information on child abuse or to report suspected cases on child abuse, contact the Social Welfare Division on 33 Great Marlborough Street or call 266-3020 or 266-3080. Thanks for staying with us. Agriculture is a major priority for the Dominica Labour Party government. On Thursday, the Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt met with farmers of Salisbury to discuss the way forward. Shakira Pierre brings us that report. The Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt met with the farmers of Salisbury on Thursday to hear and discuss their concerns. Farmers were given the opportunity to voice what affect them and a way forward will be looked at by government. Officials from the Ministries of Public Works and Agriculture and the Banana Company in Measures were also present. The farmers from Salisbury expressed concerns over the rehabilitation of the Salisbury Feeder Road and the manner in which work is being done on that road. The Honorable Prime Minister explained to farmers that this feeder road was not on the list of roads to be rehabilitated by the European Union through the banana accompanying measures program. They had to go through a process of selecting the roads. So the government submitted a whole list of roads. The EU had to engage an independent person, a company out of St. Lucia, to do its own assessment of the 15 or so feeder roads which we selected for consideration under the BAM funding, Banner Company Measures funding. The assessment was done. We were all shocked when the order came in terms of the order of roads to be. And if truth be told, as I've said otherwise, I may have said so in the parliament, this road was not one of the top roads for consideration under the BAM funding. The government had to speak to the European Union and say, look, we have been to this road. Yeah, we understand the report of the consultant. But there are critical sections on this road which must be done. Honorable Skerritt made it clear that since government's intervention, the European Union selected the Salisbury Feeder Road. He says because of this, government was therefore mandated to finance the Cahom Feeder Road. The rehabilitation of the Cahom Road will cost government $2 million and will be financed by the Citizenship by Investment Program. Farmers also pose the question of the method used to construct this feeder road. Naim Jampe is a consultant supervising the project. He thoroughly explained to the farmers how the project will be developed. There are different methods for constructing roads. Um, the ideal for this, um, when we started, was to do a new, new base layers and a new concrete surface. Um, however, we felt that the existing conditions allowed us to reuse this, the surface that's there already. Now, re regarding the, that would also save a lot of money that could be spread to other aspects and increase the, the concrete. So, for instance, um, the design originally was a three-meter section of road. But on, on seeing the, the vehicles coming and going, we realize the existing section is a, a bit wider than that. So if we put a three-meter section for you, it might feel a little uncomfortable. You might feel that you're getting less road. So to sort of balance that, we use the existing surface so we wouldn't have to bring in new material so that we could widen the road. So now, so now this road is going to be 12 feet wide. Farmers working in Petit Marcoshri spoke of two bridges which were damaged during Tropical Storm Erica, making it difficult for them to access their farms. The Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, says that funds have been made available for work in that area. If my memory is me right, about $1.7 million. 
and I have made about half a million dollars available, approved, contract signed, work started in this area. Um, for the worst sections, especially the crossing, one of the crossings, um, and then so once that, once those contracts will have been completed or ended, then we will move towards doing the second phase of those of those areas and so forth. Um, of, of those areas. So I, I'm not sure whether the farmers, it appears that some of the farmers were not aware of that. Bentley Roy, a farmer of Salisbury, said that he's pleased the government made the effort to meet with farmers. He says he sees a great outcome from this meeting. I wish to thank the government for making the effort to repair roads in the Salisbury area and the Cahome. I do farming in the Cahome area and I can either use this road or the other road. On a daily basis, I use the other road, which is very bad. And I'm happy that the government has made the effort to get contractors on the other end to do it. But the BAM road here, I know when it is done, I'm sure it's going to be much better. Roy noted that in 2011, during his tenure as the caretaker of the Salisbury constituency, government made materials available for the rehabilitation of the Salisbury feeder road. The Honorable Prime Minister asked farmers to work collaboratively with government for Dominica's economic benefits. We have to work together to address the matter. This is not about you and the government. It's not about you and scary. It's not you and, and so on. This is about us working together to address a matter that will affect all of us. The more you can produce, the better for the country. You know what I'm saying? So, so let us not, you know, and, and for me, agriculture is very important. At the end of the meeting, the Honorable Prime Minister, along with officials of the Ministries of Agriculture and Public Works, drove along the feeder road to see firsthand the road condition. For GIS News, I am Shakira Payne. Close to 100 small business owners in La Plaine are now certified in business management thanks to the Ministry of Commerce, Enterprise and Small Business Development. GIS's Kadisha St. We attended the closing ceremony of the training on Thursday and has more. 94 aspiring and established small business owners in the communities of La Plaine, Delis and Boetica are now better equipped to more effectively manage their businesses. On Thursday, a closing ceremony was held to conclude the three-day training, which, according to the Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the La Plaine constituency, Peter Seja, was given positive feedback. This session here in La Plaine was the one that stands out as where people were longing, quenching after the knowledge and experience as to how to develop their small businesses. It speaks volumes of us. It speaks volumes of us here in the Southeast, in the Lablin constituency, and it makes me feel an added sense of responsibility to ensure that your quest for knowledge is uh, actually um, given or achieved. The Honorable NP revealed that 94 individuals will benefit from $470,000 dispersed to the Lapland constituency. This week, throughout this week, no less than 94 individuals from Lapland, Dennis and Whitaker have received checks to augment their businesses and in some cases to augment their businesses, the new, the ones who are starting up did not receive only those involved in business. We expended some $470,000. We put that, so let's break, up, break down the language. We put $470,000 in the hands of 94 individuals in Dalis, Boudicca, and Lafley. Your business, not the government's own. Your business, not the PS's own. Your profit, not ours, but we believe that if you are able to work this into the money that we have given to you, get your business to do well, in the end, Boetica does well, Davis does well, La Plaine does well, and Dominica will be better off. The Honorable Minister for Commerce, Enterprise, and Small Business Development, Rosalind Paul, congratulated the participants on their achievement and divulged that her ministry intends to launch small business development centers across the island to provide further support 
to entrepreneurs. We do not leave you on your own. We also provide monitoring, we provide training, we provide technical advice. And um, we hope to be implementing another program called, uh, as we call it, SBDC, Small Business Development Centers, which would really focus on mentorship and business counseling, business advisory, so that you would have a place, many of you would have a place to go that would, when you need it, to get that sort of support. Facilitator Natasha Yiloy Labad urged participants to put all critical information learned during the sessions to good use. For GIS News, I'm Kadisha St. Louis. In more news, while Dominica is the land of 365 rivers, there is still the need for conservation. That's according to the Honorable Minister for Water Resource Development, Reginald Austri. GIS's Kirisha St. Louis also has this report. The Honorable Minister for Lands, Housing, Settlements and Water Resource Management, Reginald Austri, is reporting that $20.4 million was spent restoring water systems in Dominica following the damage of Tropical Storm Erica. Speaking at the official commissioning ceremony of the Corona, Sylvina and Despo water systems last week, he stated that the significant sum was necessary to maintain high standards of living for nationals. 85% of the national water supply was destroyed by Tropical Storm Erica. 85%. And the government had to move in quick time to restore, even on a temporary basis, those water systems. And it cost us somewhere in the region of $20.4 million from Tropical Storm Erica of 2015 to the first quarter of 2017, just over two years, the government has restored us to where we were. He provided updates on government's plan to restore various water systems across the island. It cost the Wasco and the government some $1.6 million on top of the $30 million that we were spending, another $1.6 million to restore the water temporarily. As we speak, work is ongoing in Kulibi Street, trying to restore the intake at a cost of some $1.4 million. In Wesley Woodford Hill, Marigot area, we have spent some $400,000 to restore that water system. And we intend to spend another 2.5 um, million to fully restore that water system. The Honorable Minister urged nationals to conserve water and use it wisely. Farming, starvation, cholera, um, I'm Dr. McIntyre, a medical doctor, and all the other waterborne diseases because of lack of water or stagnant water. And so it is even more critical that if we need to maintain the pristine of the environment and our health itself is dependent on water. The absence of water is even more critical than the water you have. For GIS News, I'm Kredisha St. Louis. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. When you think about it, food is life. That's why people come to Dominica. They don't only come for the waterfall or the scenery or the view, but it's the flavor. Sometimes it is just what they can taste. The flavors that we have here, you can't find anywhere in the world. They are truly unique. I've been in business 17 years, and I see so many guests come and go. My business is to put a smile on their face and something good in their belly. Everything we serve here is local. It comes from all over Dominica. So we get fresh lettuce or vegetable or fish from San Sauve, all our products from the farm. Sometimes go on the farm and help them pick. The uniqueness of the experience is in how authentic it is. I heard the um, taxi driver promoting my plantain chips. I said, that's the best plantain chips you can ever have. I don't have to put on TV. <laughs> Money is not everything but leaving customer with a smile, friendly service, and they will come back. This is the real Dominica. I'm just proud to be a part of it. 
My name is Maurice Smith. They call me Rudy. Tourism is my business. Welcome back. Government has spent more than $1.6 million to upgrade the Windsor Park Sports Stadium. The Honorable Minister for Sports, Justina Charles, speaking at the 11th Annual National Sports Awards, detailed the improvements which will make the stadium ready for the next big event. Kimani Senja has more. The East Stand has received some attention and government has also spent $1.3 million to install a new scoreboard at the stadium. The Honorable Minister for Sports says this is all part of government's plan to continue maintenance of the arena. These improvements have come at a great time when Dominica is preparing for the next big event in cricket. As part of our maintenance plan and in preparation for hosting the match, we just completed replacement of the roof on the east stand at a cost of $348,496. A new state-of-the-art electronic scoreboard costing government $1.3 million is presently being installed at the stadium with the commitment, <coughs> with the commitment from the engineers that the new scoreboard will be up and functioning for the upcoming March. As government continues to respond to the needs for improved sporting facilities across the island, the minister revealed that plans are in motion for a new athletics track that follows a request from the Dominica Amateur Athletics Association and Dominica Olympics Committee for land to build a track. A portion of land of Warner at Warner has been identified. The land in question belongs to the Dominica Social Security. The government has taken a decision to purchase the land from the Dominica Social Security and remains fully committed to seeing the realization of a 400 meter track. Honorable Charles called for the sporting community to exercise patience as government continues to incrementally bring development to sports on the island. Kimani Saint-Jean for GIS News. Minister for Public Works Miriam Blanchard has listed a number of major infrastructural projects which the government of Dominica is currently undertaking through her ministry. One of the highlights is the rehabilitation of the road from Pontcassé to Tarish Pete. Kimani Senja reports. Speaking at the official commissioning of the New West Bridge earlier this week, Honorable Blanchard highlighted a number of projects currently undertaken by government as part of its comprehensive plan to bring safer roads across the country. Work will begin on the three bridges which were washed away on the west coast during Tropical Storm Erica in 2015. Most of you may have realized that work has started on the rehabilitation of the West Coast Road. I have no doubt that you're all familiar with the scope of that project, which will include, but is not limited to, the replacement of three bridges at Mokushri, Batali, and Point Round. Ladies and gentlemen, the three new bridges are coming and the work on the first bridge will commence as early as August of this year. This project will be undertaken by the government of the People's Republic of China. As work on the Chinese-funded York Valley Bridge progresses, plans are also underway for the rehabilitation of the road from Layu to York Valley. The designs for the road between the Layu Bridge and York Valley Bridge will soon con be completed. Rehabilitation of that road, however, falls under another project, financed by a loan from the Caribbean Development Bank. Plans are also advancing on the much-talked-about road rehabilitation project from Lubia to Bagatelle. The government of the United Kingdom has granted over 100 million EC dollars for this project. Contracts have already been signed for a feasibility study and road safety assessment. The major highlight, however, is the rehabilitation of the road from Poncasse to Tarish Pete. Another project that we're excited about in our portfolio 
is the rehabilitation of 4.5 kilometers of road from the Pocasse Junction to the Tarich Pit Junction. The scope of that project includes the complete resurfacing of that section of road, replacement of almost all of the culverts, and construction of additional drainage infrastructure, installation of safety measures, including guardrails, road markings, and reflective studs are also included, not to mention street lighting. The ministry re will review the design submitted by the consultant before the middle of May, so that that project too can go out to tender so work can begin soon. Honorable Blanchard calls this particular project a test of things to come, as she revealed that there are plans to replicate this project throughout that part of the island. For GIS News, Kimani Sejan reporting. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has commended the Honorable Minister for Water Resource Development, Reginald Ostry, for significant development of Dominica's water system. GIS's Kadisha Slantwi has more. Addressing the official commissioning ceremony of the Corona, Sylvina and Despo water systems last week, Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt revealed that under the exceptional management of Honorable Reginald Ostry, $150 million has been spent by government in enhancing and upgrading water systems across the island. He has provided the ministerial leadership that's required to ensure that we could have in a revolutionary way, create access to water across Dominica. But not only new communities, but enhancing and upgrading many water systems across Dominica. And replacing asbestos pipes in many communities, including in Goodwill and Rosa. And my estimation is that in the years that I've been Prime Minister of this country, we have invested from various sources of funding over $150 million in water projects across Dominica. For GIS News, I'm Kredisha Sentley. And finally, this news time, girls aspiring to become professionals in the field of ICT have been encouraged to not allow themselves to be marginalized or to be made inferior. This encouragement came from Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Information, Science, Telecommunications and Technology, Lucian Blackmore. Blackmore was speaking at an event at the Dominica State College held last Thursday to recognize International Girls in ICT Day. He expressed that the ministry is working to support women in ICT and as long as young women take advantage of the educational opportunities, there are no boundaries set for them in Dominica. Do not feel any way marginalized or feel defeated by anyone, especially your male peers that may want to make you feel insignificant or inferior. Um, the only in insignificance or inferior inferiority that you may have is by marginalizing yourself in your education. But once you have that educational background and you have that talent and you have that academic base, that there is nothing as being marginalized in Dominica. He dispelled the notion that some professions should be male assigned. It something saddens me to see that right in our community, in our country, we still have a few minor persons, I would like to say, in our midst that still don't understand and appreciate that women have equality. And there's no such thing as a man thing or a woman's thing, or a male-dominated profession versus an integrated profession. Blackmore reiterated that women in ICT are an asset to the development of Dominica. And this is the message I really want to take to you today from the Ministry of Information, Science, Telecommunications and Technology. We see you as a national asset. And that's the English segment of the news. Shakira Pierre is next with the Creole Highlights. Bienvenue à ce nouvel Aquéol, non moi c'est Shakira Pierre. J'ai dit, Premier ministre Dr. Roosevelt Skerridge, je vais depuis planter Bawi pour parler contre Cordisio Chimé pour aller à Jade. Premier ministre là aussi parler contre problème planter Katapé tous les jours. 
Il dit gouvernement que coûter ces problèmes ça là et puis taper une manière pour arranger ces problèmes là. Moun qui ka travaille à ministre public works et puis ministre agriculture c'est aussi un meeting là. Ingénieur ou ministre public works ba information kod kouma travaille là ni pour faire à sou chemin là. Après meeting là pour mes ministres là taper opportunité là pour voir condition chemin là. A d'autres nouvelles, mercredi division court est lancée dans Vesta l'année 2007. C'est une année là pour lancer dans Vesta pour place à Old Mill Cultural Center. Il y a une autre activité qui a pour place pour Dom Vesta. Nouvelle gouvernement parle et puis officier court est Gregory Arbes. J'en ai là, nous euh, tenions cérémonie pour lancer euh, Dom Vesta. Dom Vesta l'année ça là. Et puis il y a plusieurs activités. Il y a une activité en pièce théâtre, il y a une activité en musique, concert, il y a une activité pour qui est activité éducation, il y a une activité pour Simen l'Afrique. So, il y a une autre uh, différente activité pour Domfest l'année Sala. Et puis finalement, étudier à State College, qui a étudié Midwifery, Chenio Exposition pour éduquer le public là. Quand d'autres manières naturelles, ils ont servi par la USAID. Shannon Serafin, c'est un étudiant midwifery à Dominica State College. Le programme de nous, Nigeria, c'est un programme que nous avons allé à l'école um, State College. C'est pour nous aider les femmes pour faire des enfants. So, ça, c'est un um, part de notre programme. Ça, là. Nous sommes supposés faire une health exposition à Nigeria. Complimentary alternative medicine, c'est. Juste ni les moun ka servi bagay natural ou ben sa docteur ya pa sa fè ba ou sa ou sa fè ba ko ou ben ou sa ale bo on lot moun ki pa on medical docteur pou fè ba so sa se sa complimentary medicine se kont Sa se tout pou nouvel akoyol nou mwen se chak Europe ni yo bo weekend au revoir Coming up next your tip on improving your memory naturally I love the freedom when I'm out there. Simply put, the worries from shore, none of that out there. And it's my deliberate. I learned it from my dad. My dad is one of the senior guys here who catch the biggest fish around here. And he's top with the red snappers. It's a family thing. I'm the only one fishing right now in the family. Just keeping it going. I enjoy bringing them up, man. <laughs> Sometimes we have a yellowfin tuna, 400 pounds. Man, let me tell you, that's just a joy out there. I enjoy going out there and just holding the big fish. I don't leave weights, I leave fish. The morning of my fishing trip, I would get up, make a little spice tea. Then I come down here, I have my GPS, which most fishermen are supposed to have that. Normally I prepare the day before, because whenever you go out there, you must have ice. Ice is a must for preservation of the fish. So I always make sure I have everything the day before. My fish represents me, and I bring good quality fish ashore, simply because the restaurants themselves, they have to show a quality product. Tourism and agriculture go hand in hand, that's what I think. We're all connected, it's, it's like a big machine, and I'm just so proud to be a part of it. My name is Brandon Carlyle, and tourism is my business. Improving your memory can be as simple as adopting some natural lifestyle habits. A healthy lifestyle can support your brain health and even encourage your brain to grow new neurons, a process known as neuroplasticity. Some of these habits and techniques include getting a good night's sleep. The process of brain growth or neuroplasticity is believed to underlie your brain's capacity to control behavior, including learning and memory. And begin playing brain games. If you don't sufficiently challenge your brain with new surprising information, it eventually begins to deteriorate. That's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website, news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow our Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us on the GIS News production team, I am Priska Julian. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.